Hello everyone and welcome back to Geography with Mrs Nguane. Today we're going to be discussing climatology and this is just a quick little introduction to climate and the difference between climate and weather. Also we're going to be discussing the elements of weather and to start off we're going to be talking about the layers of the atmosphere. This is relevant to grade 8s and 10s and also some older grades but as I said it's a very basic introduction. So to start off, a meteorologist is the person who studies meteorology and meteorology is the scientific study of the processes and patterns that cause particular weather conditions. As I said, we will be discussing the difference between weather and climate because that is something very important. Often we think that they're the same thing, but they're actually not. So let's look at the layers of the atmosphere. We have five layers in our atmosphere of Earth. We have the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. The troposphere is the closest layer to Earth and that is where all weather takes place. The temperature also decreases with height. So if you think about the difference between sea level and Mount Everest, Mount Everest has very thin air or the air molecules are not so dense together. And that is why as you move higher up into the atmosphere, the temperature decreases because there are less gas particles able to hold on to the heat. The stratosphere is the second layer in our atmosphere and it contains ozone, which absorb harmful UV rays from the sun. And in this layer, the temperature increases. In the meantime, you can start thinking about why in this specific layer does temperature start to increase instead of decrease since we're going higher up in the atmosphere. If you think about space in general we think freezing cold nothing can live there so why in this layer does the, the temperature increase another important um, aspect of this layer is that it contains ozone and you've probably heard of ozone depletion certain burning of fossil fuels and certain products that we use can deplete the ozone and that layer is very, very important for us because it protects us from the harmful UV rays. The mesosphere contains few gases. It protects us from meteors. And then also the temperature decreases with height again, like the troposphere. The thermosphere also contains few gases. The gases absorb the sun's radiation and the temperature increases with height, like the stratosphere. And then the last layer is the exosphere where most of our satellites are found and it's also a protective layer for the earth. Okay, so this graph is really important. It shows us the, the temperature. So at the bottom you can see the temperature either increases or decreases. And on the left hand side it shows us the kilometers above sea level. So you can see in the troposphere, the temperature decreases. You can see that it gets to minus 40 around there. And then in the stratosphere, it starts to increase. And then the mesosphere, it starts to decrease again. And then the thermosphere, it increases again. Okay, and those two layers where the temperature increases instead of decreases, we say that there is a temperature inversion in those layers. And the reason why we have temperature increasing in the stratosphere and thermosphere, even though we're going higher up in the atmosphere, is because the stratosphere and thermosphere contain specific gases that absorb radiation from the sun. And therefore, it makes those layers warmer instead of cooler. OK, so what is the difference between weather and climate? This is very important. As I said, sometimes there's a bit of confusion between the two. Weather is the daily atmospheric com co conditions. For example, the temperature, the rainfall, the wind speed. So I could say that today the weather is cloudy and cold with a chance of rain, or it's very windy with clear skies, that kind of thing. So it's describing the daily atmospheric conditions. Whereas climate is the average atmospheric conditions measured over time. You've heard things like Mediterranean climate. Those kinds of things are the climate that's, me sorry, the, uh, the weather that's measured over a long period of time. You can get specific climate zones like desert or tropical or tundra climates. So those are kinds of climates because they're measured over time. If we take Johannesburg, for example, 
the weather in Johannesburg can be different every day, but our climate is quite moderate summers. It does get quite hot, but more wet weather in summer. In winter, it will be dry and cooler temperatures. So even though in summer we could have one rainy day and one dry day, that is the daily atmospheric conditions. Our climate has kind of like a general pattern of what happens in the different seasons. So in summer, wet and um, moderate temperatures, whereas in winter, cooler temperatures and very dry and clear skies. Okay, now we're going to be discussing, discussing the elements of weather. There are quite a few of them and these are important for when you do map uh, synoptic weather maps in grade 10 and later on in high school. So that's why we're going to be discussing them now. But there are different elements of weather and those are measured in different units and they're also measured with different instruments. Some of them are a little bit um, more common, things that you've seen before, others you, pr you might not even have seen them before. <laughs> okay, so temperature is, m is the measured amount of heat in a place or object. And we measure temperature with a thermometer in degrees Celsius. Other countries use Fahrenheit, or America uses Fahrenheit. Um, and then humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air. And this is measured with a hygrometer, and that is in percentage. It's measured in a percentage. If we compare, if you've been to Johannesburg, you know that it's not very humid here at all. In winter, all of our hands and lips get very dry, whereas a place like Durban is much more humid or tropical places usually have a very high humidity. And that is because there are differing amounts of water vapor in the air. OK, then the next one, rainfall is the amount of rain falling in Sorry, the amount of water falling in rain or snow or ice. And this is measured using a rain gauge and it's measured in millimeters. You might have seen one of these before in a garden somewhere. The next one is wind speed. The wind speed is the rate at which air is moving in a particular area. And it's measured using an anemometer. This is either measured in knots, kilometers per second or meters per second. Okay, and then we get air pressure. Air pressure is the force exerted on a surface by the air above it as gravity pulls it to earth. So the air pressure in Durban will be higher because it's closer to sea level, which means that there's more air pressing on the people's heads in Durban than in Johannesburg because the altitude of Johannesburg is very high. Altitude is height above sea level. And then air pressure is me measured with a barometer and the unit that we use is pascals and for short, just a PA, capital P and an A. Okay, and then cloud cover is the fraction of the sky covered by clouds. It's, it's measured in eighths of the sky or octaves. So for example, if you have a synoptic weather map that has um, one over eight, that means that it's only an eighth covered by clouds the sky is only an eighth covered by clouds whereas eight over eight is full clouds you can't see the blue of the sky at all okay and then wind direction is the direction in which the wind is moving from the word from is very important often we think that direction of wind direction is the place it's moving to but we actually it's actually the direction that the wind is moving from this could either be measured with a wind vane, which is kind of like a little, you've maybe seen them before, like a little chicken on someone's roof with a like north, south, east, west thingy that moves around. Or it's also measured with a wind sock, which you might have seen at an airport or places like that. And those are measured in direction. So you'd have a southeasterly wind or a northern wind or something like that. Okay, these are just some pictures of the ones that are a little bit less common. This is a hygrometer used to measure humidity. And here's just an example of the water vapor in the little beakers. So to represent 10% humidity, you can see that the water vapor particles are very sparse. There's not that many of them. Whereas 90% relative humidity, there's lots of water vapor molecules 
together and that's why the air feels kind of thick and soupy when you walk outside if it's very humid. Okay, and then a rain gauge, this is what it looks like if you haven't seen one before. This is an anemometer, which is to measure wind speed. And then this is a barometer, so you can see um, what is used to measure air pressure. And then on the right hand side there, there's a little diagram just showing, as I was explaining, the difference between, for example, Johannesburg or Durban. You can see that the particles of air are much closer together, closer to the ground, as instead of compared to when we move further up away from the Earth's surface. So the higher up you go, the more the particles are spread apart, whereas the closer you are to sea level, the particles are much closer together because of gravity pulling them down. I hope this introduction to climatology was helpful for you. I will make more in-depth climatology videos in future, so make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss them. And remember to comment which topics you'd like me to cover next.